Okay, here we go. Let's do a few examples. This problem might cause you some angst on the AP exam if you saw it, but if we use L'Hopital's rule, it makes it a cinch. So let's find the limit of the numerator. The limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1. Well, I can just do that mentally. 1 squared minus 1 is 0. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. The limit as x approaches 1 of the natural log of x. Again, by direct substitution, I, can, I know that the natural log of x is equal to, or the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So I can use L'Hopital. So this limit, x squared minus 1 over the natural log of x as x approaches 1, can be rewritten using L'Hopital as the limit of the derivative of the top, which is 2x, over the derivative of the bottom, which is 1 over x, as x approaches 1. And now I can do my direct substitution. 2 times 1 over 1 divided by 1, which is just equal to 2. So the answer to that problem is 2. Okay. I'm going to go with pink, see how pink it is. All right, let's do some more. Again, this is really only going to happen when we have rational functions. If you just had something like um, the limit, oh, that's not really easy to see, but let's try a new one. The limit of e to the x times 5 minus x as x approaches 0, then you're not going to use L'Hopital because our L'Hopital's rule only deals with 0 over 0 or the infinities over the infinities. So if there's no denominator, you don't have to worry about doing L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so let's take a look at number 4. I'm going to take the limit of the numerator, 2e to the x minus 2, as x approaches 0. And again, by inspection, I can say e to the 0 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. And that's perfectly legitimate to do on the AP exam. Now I'm going to do the bottom. The limit as x approaches 0 of 5x. Well, 5 times 0 is 0, so I can apply L'Hopital's rule. Now I'm just going to conserve some space here. This gives me the limit as x approaches 0. The derivative of the top is 2 times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, minus 0, over the derivative of the bottom, which is 5. And now I can do direct substitution. 2e to the 0 becomes 2 times 1, which is 2, and 5 is just 5. So this answer is 2 fifths. How about this guy? This guy is kind of a scary limit problem. Let's do the limit of the numerator. Can you see that color? Yeah, I guess you can. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of negative, oops, sorry. Oh, I have an eraser. I keep forgetting that. x plus 2. Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of the denominator, x squared plus 5 minus 3. Well, let's do this. Negative 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. So I can go to L'Hopital. Alright, so I get the limit. As x approaches negative 2, the derivative of the top is 1. The derivative of the bottom, well I have to think of this, this part here being rewritten to the 1 half. So that's 1 half times x squared plus 5 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x, minus the derivative of 3, which is 0. I'm not going to write that. Oops, I'm kind of running out of room here. Equals the limit as x approaches negative 2. I'm going to clean this up. So my 2 and my half cancel. So this gives me 1 over x over the square root of x squared plus 5. Right, that negative 1 half drops it down to the bottom. So now let's talk about putting the negative 2 in there. 1 over negative 2 over negative 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. So we got number lasagna going on here. So the answer to this problem is negative 3 halves. Okay. Let's go on and do number 6. Number six, the limit of the numerator as h approaches zero, tangent of five h. Well, five times zero is zero, tangent of zero is zero. 
the limit of the denominator. Well, the limit of h as h approaches 0 is just 0. So I'm going to use L'Hopital. So I get the limit as h approaches 0. Oops. The derivative of the top, well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared 5h times the derivative of 5h, which is 5. And I'm going to stick that out in the front. And the derivative of the bottom, well, the derivative of h is just 1. Again, I didn't give my, I didn't plan these problems out the right way. I need more room this way. Okay, so let's see here. I don't know what secant is. I'm going to convert that to cosine. So I get the limit as h approaches 0 of 5 times 1 over the cosine of 5h squared, right, all over 1. That is the limit. I'm not even going to write limit anymore. I'm going to go ahead and just plug in numbers. Let's see what we got here. Oops, that didn't erase that free. Equals. All right, so 5 times 0 is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. So I get 5 in the top, and I got 1 on the bottom. So the answer to this problem is just 5. Got to know those unit circle values. All right, how about this one? Now we're not approaching a number, we're approaching infinity. So let's think about this. Let's do the top. The limit as x approaches infinity of 5x cubed. Well, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger without bound, we're going to cube it and then multiply it by positive 5. So that's going to positive infinity. Let's do the same thing for the bottom. The limit as x approaches infinity, e to the 2x. Well. If x is approaching infinity, growing without bound, we're doubling it and then raising e to that number, that's also going to infinity. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. Let's take the derivative of the top. That would be, I've got my shadow here, 15x squared over e to the 2x times 2. So I'm just going to write that 2 out in front. Now this is where L'Hopital's rule can get really annoying because if I'm letting x approach infinity, this goes to infinity still, and the bottom goes to infinity still. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 30x over 2e to the 2x times 2, which is 4e to the 2x. That's still going to infinity over infinity, so I apply L'Hopital again, and I get 30 over 4e to the 2x times 2, which is 8e to the 2x. So now I have 30 over infinity. So think about that. If you have 30 divided by a number that's growing without bound, this limit is going to 0. And remember that note I made at the beginning in the first lesson? Exponential functions grow faster than polynomial functions. Well, that's what we just had going on here. We had a polynomial function in the top and an exponential function in the bottom. This guy is going to grow much more quickly than this guy, so that will always end up being 0. If you had it the other way around, if you had the limit of e to the 2x over 5x to the third, so all this same work will still happen, but I would get the reverse of this. I would get eventually to the point of 8e to the 2x over 30. So think about that, a number that's getting really, 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 really big divided by 30. That would be infinity. I don't know why I put a minus sign there. I should probably go squiggle here so I don't confuse you. Okay. Oh, and I keep forgetting I have the eraser. I can erase that negative sign. Okay, so this problem would be infinity. So just remember that polynomial functions grow more slowly than exponential functions. These guys grow much more quickly. Now if you forget, just think about the COVID-19 thing. These guys grow really, really fast. Exponential growth grows really, really fast. Okay, so I only have three more problems I want to do with you, but again, this video is almost 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop it.